The Sony a7 III is one of the most well-regarded multi-purpose intermediate level cameras. Whether you're wanting to use it for photo or video, the camera is packed with multiple features on both sides that allows you to get professional level stuff at an intermediate level price. This camera came out back in 2018, so it just begs the question, is it still a viable option here today in 2023? Since then, a bunch of new cameras have come out, so surely it's outmatched, right? Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Austin Davis and I'm going to give my insights to hopefully help answer that question for you. I'm going to go over the Sony a7 III. I've personally had mine since 2019 and I've used mine for numerous projects, both photo and video alike. So while I'll definitely have different opinions on certain things, I'm sure, my hopes is that my insights will be able to help you make a decision on whether or not this is worth the investment or if it's not. The Sony a7 III is a $2,000 full-frame mirrorless camera sporting a 24 megapixel sensor capable of shooting 1080p and 4K footage. It shoots 1080p at 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames a second, and it shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames a second. The camera's lens mount is Sony's E-mount, has 693 focus points, and has an electronic viewfinder and tilting screen. The resolution of the viewfinder is about 2.3 million dots, and the resolution of the LCD screen is about 921,000. The camera is able to shoot 10 frames a second in its continuous drive setting and can handle about 710 shots per fully charged battery. On the left side of the camera you can find a microphone and headphone jack, micro HDMI port, type C and micro USB port. The camera sports two SD card slots on the side and has multiple custom function buttons all across the body including two preset modes on the top dial. But thanks to Sony's menu you can really customize any button you want on this. Now that we have the basic stats of the camera out of the way, I just kind of wanted to take a second to talk about the overall build quality and just the design of the camera in general. Um, I have two major complaints. One being there's no lock on the exposure compensation dial. That gets bumped out all the time. It gets bumped out of place all the time. And so if something is wrong with your image, if something's overexposed, underexposed, it's most likely this got bumped into a place where you don't want it. So just a fair warning there, this gets moved pretty easily, whether it's uh, around your neck, on your chest, or onto your side, or if you're just simply adjusting certain things on the camera and you don't notice that you bump it. Um, so just be wary of that. There is no lock on that and it moves all the time. The second one being the tilting screen. Uh, the fact that this camera does not have a fully articulated screen uh, it, it came to haunt me in a few situations, but so I came from Canon. I came from a Canon T6i, which um, obviously this is a much better camera than the T6i, although no shade to the T6i. The T6i was a lovely little camera. I love the thing, uh, but it had a fully articulated screen. And so coming from that to just a tilting screen, I was a little bummed and I kind of had to remember, especially if I was trying to say shoot myself um, or just get, uh, it, it, sometimes if you're really low and you're shooting vertical, you'll, it would be very helpful to have a flip out screen to where you can, you know, see your screen, but it doesn't. So, um, yeah, the, the, that was one of the, also one of the biggest, uh, gripes that I had with this camera. But aside from that, as far as the overall design and functionality of the camera goes, those are my only two gripes. Um, oh, three, I should say there is a third, um, the two little neck strap, um, attachments on the side. They will start out rigid, um, but take them off. Take them off. If you're gonna do video, take them off. Do yourself a favor because um, I didn't understand, or at least when I first got it, um, I wasn't even thinking about them jingling around. Like I, I would hear them, but I wouldn't think about, especially if you're using a mounted microphone on top, all you're gonna hear throughout your whole shoot are those little things jingling. So do yourself a favor, just take them off. If you're going to specialize in um, video, take them off. And also even photo, because just get yourself a strap that attaches down here, it's better anyways. Um, so those are the main three things. Uh, the exposure compensation dial, the tilting screen, and the two little neck straps. The, those were the three things that just design-wise I, I could not stand. Otherwise, everything else was great. I don't mind the feeling of the camera. I know some people coming from maybe bigger DSLRs, um, if you're going to a mirrorless camera in general, it's gonna feel probably a little bit cheaper than your DSLR because it's gonna weigh less, but I didn't necessarily experience that. Um, it feels pretty good in the hand. It, fe it doesn't feel cheap by any means. Um, the only things that are a little cheap and I feel like might break uh, are gonna be your little flaps on the side here. Um, just be careful with them. Uh, the, your little covers for all your ports, they feel, I feel like they could break pretty easily. Your SD card door, 
I wouldn't trust and much pressure to break this if it was going this way, so be careful with that. And then your battery compartment door as well. This just feels really flimsy and I feel like I could break it going this way. It does come off, but I wouldn't want you to break those little tabs that hold it on there because then you wouldn't be able to put your, your <laughs> battery door on. Um, other than that, Really, really pleased with the overall quality of it. I've actually dropped it a few times and it's taken a few spills. Um, like a champ, like a champ. On this corner right here, uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but there's a little mark right there. Um, and then, where else? Uh, I think it's just this corner is where I dropped it. I, oh, it took a spill on this side too. But uh, it, uh, it held up quite well. So very, very pleased with the build quality and the overall layout for the most part. Let's talk about using this camera for photos. Um, like I said earlier, it's got a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, so really good quality coming out of this camera uh, for photos. You get plenty of detail, um, and then depending on whichever lenses you get, you get depth and all that, but that comes with the lens. Um, it's, I, primarily use this for real estate now, um, as far as my work goes. I've also done portraits, landscapes, product, a whole bunch of stuff with this for photos, and it does a great job. A lot of the stuff on the photo side is going to be your lighting and your lenses and all that. So there's a lot that goes into the photo side of things that's you know more than just the camera body, um, but this does everything I needed to for photos. The landscape pictures look great, um, your portraits look great, and, uh, and me personally, I know a lot of people compare the colors to Canon and other places. You know, Canon is kind of superior when it comes to the color science game. Um, and I will agree that Canon's colors for photos do look better. Um, I, I, I can't really disagree there, but I think these look just fine. They really do. The colors that come out of any of the Sony's that I've used look great. And then with a little bit of tweaking, you can get them to Canon status if you really play around with it. The colors that come out of it look just fine. Moving on to the battery life, like I said before, it's about 710 shots or so per fully charged battery. And if I'm being honest, I feel like it might even be more than that. Um, I have pretty much uh, only used two batteries for my whole entire career using this camera and I never really had to worry about running out of battery life. Um, a battery grip, I got the Sony um, EV was Z3, whatever battery grip they've got, um, and that basically lives on this camera now. I don't have it on there now, but um, two batteries is going to get you through any kind of shoot you need, whether it's photo or video, really. Uh, battery life is phenomenal. Um, on this camera. Let's talk about video. For this segment, I wanted to do a blind comparison between this camera and then my Sony a7S III that I use for all my video projects. Um, I'm gonna play two separate edits and then I'm gonna let you guys guess which one you think is the a7S III and which one you think is the a7S III. So here are those edits. So which one did you think was the a7 III and which one did you think was the a7S III? Well, the first edit was actually the a7S III and the second edit was the a7 III. And in my personal opinion, 
The second edit is way better. <laughs> and now that you know, you might think different. You might actually think the A7S III looks better. Um, and I guess with certain, so with certain shots, it does. Um, but overall, the second edit that I did with the A7 III is miles ahead of the first one. <laughs> and there's multiple reasons why. The first edit didn't really have any subject matter at all. It was shot in broad daylight, so not the, the best lighting scenario. Um, it was shot at like F9 uh, to compensate for that. Um, there's like no, there's no sound design whatsoever. Uh, the movements are shaky. The, there's like really no creative um, cuts or anything like that. Um, it was very dull, lackluster, and very um, entry level stuff. It looked like the stuff I was producing when I was just starting out. Unfortunately, the a7 III on the other hand looks much better. The color correction is a lot more fine-tuned is a little bit more artistic There's much better sound design. The shots have purpose behind them. There is a clear subject matter. It's a man fishing It's my buddy uh, fishing and there's all just a lot of other things that go into that edit that make it much better than the first Maybe not necessarily the quality of the images that you're seeing but it's definitely the quality in the production that was put behind it. With all that being said, the a7 III did phenomenal for me with all my video projects when I first got it. Um, like I said, I came from T6i, and so the quality jump, I remember looking at the footage the first with after the first shoot I did with the, uh, with the a7 III, first video shoot that I did, I was looking at that footage and I was blown away. I just did a simple edit of my buddy, same buddy that was fishing. I did a, a video of him just playing guitar out in the middle of like wilderness and um, the video is extremely overexposed. It, like, it's, it's bad. It looks bad. I, di I didn't color correct it or anything like that at all. And obviously you're gonna see that boost in quality. You're coming, you know, I'm coming from a crop sensor uh, that only shoots 1080 at like 30 frames a second to something that can shoot 4K up to 30 frames a second, 1080 at 120. So, I mean, yes, there are times where the, the functionality and the, the stats and the specs of the camera um, they're gonna wow you, you know, they've got that wow factor, especially if you're if you've been working on something for a while But that being said that first project that I did was it looks terrible. <laughs> it looks terrible. Of course It didn't matter to me. I thought it looked great um, But it did look terrible. So um, it goes a long way to master what you're using before you upgrade it will set you way ahead of the game because if I had actually stuck with my T6i for a really long time and just utilized that before jumping to a, this a, a more intermediate level camera with settings that I didn't, really didn't understand I probably would have progressed a lot faster and probably would have been even better today um, had I not made that jump so quick. So as this camera gets older and is kind of kicked into that older maybe cheaper Hard to believe two grand is like cheaper, but cheaper category of cameras. Um, it's gonna get disregarded as, um, you know, maybe not as good as some of the other options out there, which is entirely false. There are plenty of other cameras out there that are better than the a7 III, yes. And while the a7 III might not do video phenomenally, or might not do photo phenomenally, it does both very well. And that can go a long way, especially if you're just starting out um, or looking to go into that more intermediate level. In my opinion, the a7 III can still go toe to toe with any camera in its price range. And I know I'm gonna use mine for years to come. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got some value from spending your time with me today. Now go enjoy your life, and I'll see you in the next video.